Welcome to Youth Circle. My name is Colin Srimpon, a student journalist at the University of Ghana. Today we are going to look at fake news and also um, misinformation, especially um, when it comes to first-time voters going to the 2024 general election series of reports. I've raised concerns about first-time voters and the numerous misinformation happening and how it can also impact their voting patterns during the presidential and parliamentary elections. Uh, today, I have here with me a gentleman and a lady from Unimac, formerly of GIJ. Good morning. Good morning. Um, what's your name? Uh, my name is Daniel Afari. I'm a third year student at the University of Media, Arts and Communication, formerly GIJ. Mm. I'm reading PR, mm. and then I'm also an MIO advocate. Uh, thank you for joining us, Daniel. Thank you. All right. How about you? Um, okay, good morning once again. Um, my name is Adeline Ann Osebre, a student at Unimark IG, second year, and I'm reading public relation with marketing, mm. and a first-time voter as well. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Uh, first-time voter, um, are you going to vote? Because there are a lot of people who aren't ready to vote. <laughs> Just on a lighter one. <laughs> yeah, given the state of the economy and mm -hmm. the political issues that are coming home. I mean, I feel like it's very interesting to have my thumb on that. Chroma issue, so you have to make a decision. <laughs> yeah. Right, right, right. Daniel, how about you? Uh, of course, <laughs> I've had two years to think about it because, uh, you know, first time voters are supposed to start 18, but mm -hmm. at a point I didn't want to vote because, I mean, over the past few 32 years, whether I vote for A or B, <laughs> the Same. country still it is. So. But um, I've learned to find out that, um, I found out that, um, it's important to vote because it's your civic responsibility mm -hmm. and then if you don't vote you are literally part of the problem so yeah <laughs> i'm going to vote i like the part where you said it is a civic responsibility that the constitution says um, but you know there are a lot of factors that are going to influence this particular election and also the pattern of voting yeah. uh, daniel what we are looking at today is fake news and misinformation in other words misleading information okay. in your own perspective what do you know about uh, misinformation um, so, um, to start off, um, misinformation falls under a broad category called uh, mm. information disorder, mm. where we have misinformation, disinformation, and malinformation. Well, um, it all lies to um, intent, intent to cause harm. So, with misinformation, the people who spread the information do not have an idea or have, like, do not pay attention that this information I'm, sparing, uh, I'm sharing is false. So, it is not intentional, right? It's not intentional. Mm. Unlike disinformation, where the people intentionally share the information with the intention of causing harm. They know that the information they are sharing is not true, so they intentionally spread it to cause harm. Mm. And then, on the other side, there's another one called malinformation. It's not false news, but it's true information, but it has malicious intent. All right. yeah. Interesting. All right. Um, and you yourself, have you come across any news that you feel like, yeah, this one is not, in a, it's not accurate? Um, yes, 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 yes. Um, day in and out a lot of people share a lot of information that um one way or the other are false especially now that we are in election season a lot of people will be seeing things which may not be true mm. just to gain um political um favor for their party so every day we encounter um such kinds of information how is it affecting you um First for, time, first time for me as an <laughs> my <laughs> advocate I, I am always quite confused of the information i receive mm -hmm. because i know that definitely people are going to be spreading false news but with other people who are not too conscious um it can affect them because they can make the wrong decisions they can get the wrong perceptions about um the about political parties because definitely party a will be saying this about party b which may not be entirely true mm -hmm. and that's going to skew their um perspective of how the um, these political parties are yeah mm. um, quick one before i come to Anne, i want you to give me an example of some of the fake news or misinformation okay example great um so during a certain <laughs> i don't mention names here right. during a certain uh, political parties um manifesto launch mm. um they mentioned some figures about some jobs that have been created by them which are not entirely true because um they were fact-checked by a certain organization yeah and then as yeah yeah, that's it. I don't know if you can go ahead with some of the organizations okay. because for me, maybe first time voter, I also want to use such platform to also mm. verify information before um, I consume them. So yes, as first time voters, yeah, it's essential to have MIL skills and then mm. 
fact checking is very important so first off anytime you receive any piece of information not even during elections or any other time it's important to fact check them you first check their source check where it's coming from you have to um if i sit here right now and i say um a plane has crashed outside right now would you believe no let, let me even use a more realistic one if i sit here and tell you your sister is sick <laughs> will you believe I'm not going to believe. First off, I don't know. I don't I'm not even sure. know whether you have a sister. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, exactly. First off, I don't even know if you have a sister. Indeed, so, so the first, first thing, yeah. check the credibility of the source. Okay, it's not. Okay. It's not always um, true information that is coming from some sources. You know, some people like to play a lot. Mm. So the person might have just said it as a play, but you you have to check whether the person is indeed serious. So first mm. off, you have to check the source, and then you have to check dates, pictures, other things. Um. In this day and age where there's AI, it's becoming quite, um, quite, quite, quite difficult to mm-hmm. find, find, to fight fact check, sorry, to fact check because AI tools are, are, are making it difficult to determine what actually is true and what is false. Um, uh, if you've been active on TikTok over the past few days, you've seen that um, the politicians are past speeches made by. I, I, <laughs> I have seen one AI video where okay. uh, Kamala Harris and that of Donald Trump were kissing <laughs> uh, I was like, oh. Even hearing. if you don't really pay attention to to the video or you are not aware of AI, you are actually going to say that this yeah, is real yeah, yeah you know over the past few years um it was quite easy to find out if this is a deep fake or this mm. but right. now with the usage of ai it's becoming very very difficult to find out right yeah. thank you daniel okay. and um how about you um what are some of the avenues for fake news for people to use to spread fake news okay so um the popular one we all know is social media mm. yeah social media is as um social media is as broad so i'll break it down this way so um, every social media platform you know including whatsapp mm. they are all avenues for sharing um unrealistic news which are not true misinform misinformation and misleading content as well mm. all right um you are a media and also information literacy advocate. Um, in terms of education and some of the measures that we need to put in place to curtail some of these things, with your club and your organization, and also um, various stakeholders who matters in some of these things, what should they do in order for us to clamp down some of these sources of spreading fake news? So um, in order to um, curb the misinformation and the rate at which um, misleading is happening online, one one best way is to educate. We have to, schools, organizations, and even the government and stakeholders who are um, more into such related um, offices need to put in place um, workshops and training and education facilities available to teach the individuals and the youth what's real and what's not. MFWA, uh, Media from something, something West Africa, mm-hmm. yeah, MFWA, and then Fact Check Ghana during May, they, they collaborated together with UNESCO and then held a fact check session at um, the Unimark IGNU campus at Jaulu. Mm-hmm. It was an interesting session because I was part of it. I right. got to learn. And then part of the reason why I feel like I'm an informed first-time voter, but then there are also individuals out there who are not very informed and are, are not very informed, so they may be easily swept away with the lies and the misleading context on social media. So I feel like if we should educate the individuals will know what's, what is and what's not, and then the right channels and how to go about it so that they don't get misled. Interesting. Right channels. What are some of the right channels? So the Nada. right mm. channels, I think Daniel already mentioned a few. So um, Fact Check Ghana is one. Yeah, and then there are also Google. You could also use Google to fact check. Like the picture thing you said with Kamala Harris mm-hmm. and then Joe Biden. Um, being someone... Who, Fact Check Ghana might have not done that research yet. But there are a lot of international Exactly, but there are a lot of international organizations out there. And that one too could also change your your thoughts on maybe Kamala Harris or somebody. Mm-hmm. So Google, this is where Google Lens comes through. So you could Google Lens check that whether it's a real picture 
or not. There are other fact-checking tools which I may not be able to mention, but since we are focused on the election 2024, as a Ghanaian, I would entreat other youth out there to check out the fact-check Ghana if they want what's credible and what's real happening in Ghana. Right. So this is Youth Circle. Today's episode, we are looking at fake news and also misinformation. Uh, Google Lens, is it an app or it is also a feature on um, the Google um, so so it's how how is it going to help or as a youth in Ghana? How can I apply it in my daily activities to fact check information? All right. So first off, information being spread and um, is not just in 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 article writing form. An information shared could be in a picture form. So mm -hmm. you you are online, you don't know what's happening, you are minding your own business, someone shares with you a picture of maybe this um, political um, presidential candidate doing this, and you are not very sure whether, did he really do this or not? Because you are just seeing a picture, you want to find out if it is true. So now you head on to your Google, it's, it's a feature on the Google mm -hmm. Chrome actually. So um, you see this small, like a camera picture like thing. So you tap on it, then you let Google scan that picture for you. Is it um, it's, it's beside the search engine right, actually. Sure. Where, where you find a microphone to record or something, yeah. So you, you input that picture there, you scan it to find out if that picture is real. Yeah, so if it is real, the after it's been scanned, it's mm -hmm. going to give you some basic information and blah, blah, blah. And if it is not real, you'll be able to know and then discard it. I assume it can provide even the original dating, which exactly. the Exactly, there's everything the in there, yes. So, for instance, there are a lot of graphics going around uh, sp pertaining to 2024 elections and campaign promises. And one recent one is the fact that Maham has promised to provide free ice cream to university <laughs> students. Um, can I use uh, um, Google Lens to fast check that? Well, like I said, Google Lens is for the pictures. Mm. So if, if, if it's a claim, then you head on to a website you can trust, a credible okay. website. So okay. with a credible website, we are looking at the Fact Check Ghana. Mm -hmm. So Fact Check Ghana, all they do over there is to fact check claims, not just um, one political party, but all claims that are made in the country to see whether it's true or not. So you head on to Fact Check, you, you, you follow their recent story, and then you find out if, is it true? Did he really say that? Mm. Because with all the manifesto so far that has been launched by various political parties, um, Fact Check Ghana had taken the time to mm. go through data analysis and then to find out is it, if it, is it true or not. Mm. Yeah. All right, all right. All right. Uh, Daniel, yeah. um, you've heard on uh, first time voter. Yeah. How is this influencing and impacting you with the numerous misinformation around there? Uh, Yes, so as maybe as I said earlier, as a first time voter, you are exposed to a lot of information, especially now that we are in the digital age with social media. There are a lot of, like, you are bombarded with a lot of information in and out through TikTok, WhatsApp. Even your mother can share stuff from TikTok to you. What um, you are supposed to do is that you are supposed to build capacity because as an individual, you are definitely going to vote. So you need to have the right information to make the right decision. So as a youth, you are in like I entreat you to like build capacity in um, MIL. I entreat you like to um, continue to learn the new ways that are being. If it's AI that is being used to make for deep fakes, you to win. If it's, if it's not exp like you can't be an expert, mm -hmm. try and learn something small about AI so mm -hmm. that if you see something, you, your instincts can even tell you that no, this image looks quite funny. Let me try and um, research or let me try and mm -hmm. use my simple Google using the Google reverse mm -hmm. image search to find out if indeed, yes, it's true or not. Mm. First time voter at CNU Mark, <laughs> GIG, Daniel. <laughs> and, and how is misinformation affecting you? You've actually mentioned of some of the sources and how we as individual first time voters, we can check some of these things, but how is misinformation, the numerous misinformation affecting you? Okay, so up until before I was, or I became an MIO, um, I became a media literate person, I was easily gullible to this news. Okay, so someone will tell you, um, Dr. Baumia is sharing dengue data, mm, I'm excited, right, so I'm tapping <laughs> on it, like, they say share it to 20 groups, Charlie, I'm doing everything. <laughs> but after I became a media literate person, 
I question everything. Mm -hmm. Even if it is true, I still question it until I am I, I am I have done my own research to believe that it is true. You cannot tell me otherwise. Mm -hmm. Yes. So if I should have still been um, I should have still be illiterate in, in with with media information um, staffs, then um, I wouldn't be well informed to choose or um, whom to vote with. Uh, sorry, I wouldn't be well informed to to know who is right for me to vote right. or who is not right for me and to you, vote. You, you may even have voted based on some of these Exactly, be fictions. because because um, I wouldn't want to date too back, but even with these recent manifestos mm -hmm. and then what Fact Check Ghana is doing, um, if I don't know Fact Check Ghana and I haven't done my research, I am very sure that I would have voted for a particular party because of what their manifesto policies had said. Mm -hmm. But after doing my research with Fact Check Ghana in one or two, now I can say that I am more comfortable with whom to believe and then whom to right. vote for. Interesting. So that means that even you, had it not been Fact Check Ghana, you are going to vote on a particular line based yes. on some of these yes. uh, misinformation. Right. Uh, the, the media has a role to play in some of these things. Yes. A quick one on what you think the media needs to do in order for all of us to correct this problem. All right. So in order to correct this problem, um, recently that was in um, about two months ago, MFWUA held another session at Men's Vehicle. So Daniel, I believe you were there. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Exactly. I so the 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 team was on polarization, mm. fake news, and, and with this upcoming election, which I'm I'm very happy that Youth mm. Circle is also doing this. So um, at that forum, they had people personnel from media houses. They were educated and then um, they were cautioned on not to share fake news. So um, as part of putting in charges of, of how to curb these fake news, some people may suggest that we get the government involved, but as a democratic country, we cannot get the government involved in everything, okay? But there can be some rules and regulation that could come from the from stakeholders of the fourth estate which could help us um, curb this like uh, maybe there could be some form of sanctions that could go to um, bloggers because um, a, a good example is Oprah News like this um, was it Oprah News or which one of these websites allows various bloggers R to be on there all right. all right so yeah. so if there should be a sanction put in place bloggers on such mini websites or even popular websites which are posting fake news will be more careful. Um, recently there was one news, I don't remember exactly what, but there were some media house um, personnel which were picked by the police because they've shared a fake news. And I feel like if more of that are being put in place, people will be more careful with what news they mm. share out there. Right. So um, Anne was mentioning one particular blogger who has been jailed for months yeah. for sharing some fake news. Daniel, just less than one minute, the role of the media in carrying the misinformation. Yeah, so the media has a very um, critical role when it comes to uh, ensuring that we, as uh, citizens, get accurate information. Unlike 10 decades or 10, 10 years ago, where the media would be interested in breaking news, breaking news. Now, before... Be the first to know. Exactly. Exclusive. First news. Be just in. Before the news would have <laughs> broke on the traditional media platforms, mm -hmm. we would have already seen it on social media. Mm -hmm. So I would entreat the traditional media platforms not to just be the news breakers, but be the right news breakers. They, don't, they shouldn't just break the news for us. They should go into details, into ensuring that we as citizens receive the right kind of information. And then... Uh, also, on the tr mostly on traditional media platforms, especially now that we are in um, election season, we have these um, politicians coming on air, spread, spreading a lot of hate speech, among other things. One of the things that um, could have controlled um, this, this thing was the broadcasting bill that has been um, delayed or <laughs> since 20, 2014. It was, if it was passed by now, um, these media houses or these media platforms would have a way to control the kind of um, content they display on, uh, like, to, to citizens. So, um, I would also entreat the government as well to pass such um such bills. Right. Um, one of the reasons I'm hearing is being delayed is because um uh, they don't want it to infringe upon people's rights among other things. But if we had this, some of these things being implemented, some of uh, it will sanitize our airwaves, if I should say. Yeah. Mm. Right. You just heard Daniel, our very first time voter, and also Adnai, uh, Anne Osibre. They are all from Unimark IJ. My name is Collins Frimpon, and I was your host for today. 
And yes, of course, I'm a student journalist from the University of Ghana. This particular conversation or episode was sponsored by or brought to you um, by Youth Bridge Foundation and supported by Czech Aid under the transition program of the embassy of Czech Republic. Thank you.